Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell. Here you are. We're lit. It's lit. We got new lights in here, so everything's gonna look really different. Uh, and Dylan's gonna have to adjust to learning how to light a lit room, as opposed to just being able to work in the darkness, as is his natural element. Um, today was another really great day on this sort of path back to uh, hopefully being strong in the squat again, but I've been pain free for two and a half weeks. I mean, knock on wood, but uh, I really think that I've finally kind of caught my stride with things. Uh, I've made some changes to my squat and to my deadlift, resulting in way less pain uh, to the point where I, I get a little bit of sensation. I wouldn't even call it pain uh, on some of my heavy deadlifts. I would have some of those for you right now, but Dylan deleted them like a punk. Um, and yeah, so uh, everything's feeling really, really good. Squats slowly climbing, working in the sort of 180 to 190 range uh, this week. And uh, for those of you who work in freedom units, that's about 400 to 425 pounds or so. Um, and those are comfortable, they're smooth, there's no pain, uh, it feels great. So uh, we'll go through today's lift, which was pause squats for triples. Started off there, worked up through. I think uh, before, oh, what? before we even do that, you should do your album recommendation. The album recommendation, okay. Um, so this is gonna be, this is gonna be six out of five Screaming Bryce heads of intensity. Uh, this is probably one of the most, one of the heaviest, one of the most chaotic ones that I've recommended but the production is absolutely top notch. Uh, the, the panning back and forth in the speakers, the production of the drum, uh, the dynamic of the overall album, the tones, everything is just incredible. Uh, the album is by a band called All Shall Perish and the album is called The Price of Existence. Uh, there's a ton of really, really great songs on there. I was just really rocking out to it before Dylan cut it down uh, for me to do this video, but definitely go check that out. It's definitely more on, like I said, the extreme metal end of the spectrum. Pretty uh, deathy, thrashy, aggressive type stuff, but I love it, can't get enough of it. Um, back to squats now? Yeah, now back to your training. Okay, now back, now back to your regularly scheduled training. Um, so yeah, pause squats today were for triples. And again, just kind of following the progression there, I squatted, comp squatted 190 earlier this week uh, for triples. So today I worked up to pause squats, uh, pause squatted the triple at uh, 192, which is about 425 in pounds. And again, felt good, felt smooth, no pain whatsoever throughout the whole, uh, whole squat session. So I really I can't, couldn't be happier about that. Um, from there, moved on to some pretty interesting uh, uh, protocol that Mike's got me doing, uh, and that is to do my incline pin presses, uh, singles the whole way up, up to a 10 RPE, and then one, uh, one back off set, kind of back down about 5%. So uh, I think I'm still kind of getting the hang of working up to a 10 while staying technical, not, you know, like losing my shoulders and all that kind of stuff. So it's an interesting uh, sort of, I don't know, experiment for me to be kind of playing with where my top end actually is on the bench more frequently. Um, that was one thing Connor said after Worlds was like, oh yeah, you had five more kilos there. And I was thinking, no way, dude. But he said, you know, you just gotta learn to grind and I don't know that I've developed that skill on my bench. So I think this will be interesting and potentially beneficial for me to do. Um, after that, I uh, worked up to, so I worked up to 310 on that, 310 pounds, 140 or so kilos, which is uh, five kilos or 10 pounds more than last week. So good progress there. Uh, RPE climbed, I think a little bit from what it was last week to this week. But again, trying to really push the envelope and get as close as I can to a 10 without lifting like crap. Um, and finally, finish the day with uh, some close grip sets eight. Close grip for me is a super, super awkward movement. Um, and I only went from, so I, I, I grip max legal and I went to ring fingers on the rings and it just feels like a totally different movement. Uh, I think it worked up to like 125 for a set of eight and was just like wobbling all over the place and pressing it back and forward and my shoulders were all over the place. I'm sure it won't look anywhere near that bad uh, on film, but it's definitely how it felt. It felt like a hot mess, but probably again a good skill for me to get better at when it comes to benching i can use all the all the benefits i can get i think we'll end it with a question today end it with a question send it with a 
end it question. Uh, what is it? MXI2 wants to know your thoughts on rolling the bar before you deadlift. Thoughts on rolling the bar before deadlifting. Um, I don't know, I think it's a, an individual thing. I think that, uh, and I think I saw this comment, he refers to like Brian Shaw specifically in that comment, yeah. So I think somebody like Brian Shaw has probably done 20 or 30,000 reps of deadlifts or 100,000 reps of deadlifts. And if he does it that way every single time, then he's gonna be able to time that perfectly and hit that perfectly. Uh, I think for most people, it's not something I would recommend getting in the habit of. Uh, but if it's something that you do and you feel like you're successful doing it, then I'm not gonna tell you not to. But here's my take on it, is that it's going to add another variable to the lift that you know, is, is dynamic and could possibly go uh, wrong. You know, could be something that contributes uh, against your favor in a lift. If you, if you catch the sort of roll too close or too far or, you know, whatever, uh, if it's outside of where you want it to be when you sort of catch that roll, I think it could be detrimental. So uh, I always try to recommend paring down all the variables that you can, doing everything absolutely the same every time. And if that includes a roll and that works, then like I said, I'm not gonna tell you not to, but I wouldn't recommend somebody go out and try that as something uh, to, to get their deadlift past a plateau or whatever. I think there are smarter and better ways to attack that. Less variables generally going to equal more consistency, which generally over time is gonna build all the things we're trying to build here in the gym. So that's my take on that. Um, that's it. Check out the swag. Check out the, the check out, kind of check out the tit sweat that I managed to accumulate throughout the day. These new hats, I really like these. They're kind of puffed out. I don't know if you guys see that. Um, but yeah, these, these printed really, really well. I think we'll do these with a couple different bill colors. We might not do the other ones that I posted. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We were trying to do some cool stuff with the other ones. Didn't really work out with what the company could embroider, but anyways, more about that later. Um, also, another exciting thing that's gonna be coming out with this apparel is Connor, Taylor, and myself are gonna be releasing a program library, and that's gonna be coming out in October. If you guys enjoyed or had success with the free program, definitely keep your eyes peeled for this. We're gonna make it uh, sort of an affordable option, uh, alternative to online coaching. You know, if you don't need that sort of hands-on approach, you'll be able to buy a program. It's gonna come with uh, some really cool stuff that we'll get into later, but super, super excited about the, uh, the program library that's going to be coming out so keep your eyes peeled ear to the ground if you will for that uh, and that'll be it for me today thanks for tuning in thanks for sticking with us this video's probably been 12 minutes by now uh, and we'll see you guys in that next one bye bye